coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Prayer is powerful because it enlists the help of God to work this supernatural. Paul was saying that when you pray and the supply that the Spirit of Jesus gives you, which could be the supply in the place of prayer, or it could also mean the supply, his intervention, the help that comes as a result of the prayer. Paul said, I know the situation is going to be turned around. call of God to full-time ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ? Do you wish to have a deeper knowledge of the Word of God, business, music, or leadership? Then Ecclesia, School of Local Church, may be the place for you to get trained. Good news! Ecclesia, School of Local Church, expands its modules to include online learning and offers a range of diploma and certificate programs that are calendar-based or self-paced. The application and admission process is now completely online and requires that you have created a profile. The application form linked to your profile enables you to keep saving any data provided until you are ready for final submission. The following steps serve as a guide to helping you complete your application process. Create an account by clicking on the Create an Account button, filling the required information on the account opening form and submit. Check your email inbox or spam folder for your login details. Go back to the Ecclesia homepage and click on Sign In. Once you're signed in, you can apply by clicking the Apply Now button on the homepage or in the Admissions tab. Select a program of choice, either calendar-based or self-paced. You can read what we offer for more details. Fill in all the required information on the form. Click Safe Draft if you want to continue your application at a later time. Your unsubmitted application can be accessed from the registration page. Submit your application if you are done. Your application will be reviewed and a decision will be sent to you via email. To find out more about Ecclesia, download the brochure, ecclesiaschool.org. Hello, and welcome today to Fresh Dew. Fresh Dew is a program that's designed for you. It's designed to build you up and to give fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Pastor Nkechiene is the host of Fresh Dew, and she's asked me to come and share the word of God with you. And I'm very grateful to her for this opportunity to bring the word of God to you. And we have been looking together uh, at a subject titled The Futility of Worry. And this is part eight of this message. And uh, our key texts have been Philippians 4, 6, and 8. I'll just read verse 6 so that we can get into what we have to get into today. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing. For in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. In the CSB, it says, don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. In the Good News Bible, don't worry about anything, but in, ev in all your prayers, ask God for what you need always asking him with a thankful heart. And so we've seen that the word anxious, the Greek word merim now, that it means to be anxious, just that solicitous, expend careful thoughts, to concern oneself, to be occupied with by your thoughts, to feel an interest in, it means also to be troubled with cares. Futility comes from futile, which means pointless, producing no useful effect. And so worry is an exercise in futility, not just because it achieves nothing, but it actually makes you worse off uh, than when you started out. So why is worry an exercise in futility? Why do we say the futility of worry? For cer certain reasons from our text, 
We're really using Philippians 4, 6 uh, as our launch pad in this series. Of course, looking at other texts, but that's our key note text. And from there, we have seen, first of all, that we have been commanded not to worry. It's a command. Secondly, like we started in the last part, you have a caring father. In the last two parts, I should have said, uh, you have a caring father. And then we said under that, instead of worrying about anything, talk to God about everything. I think we made this statement, turn every occasion for worry into an opportunity for prayer. And then we looked at the second point in the last episode, under point number two, that we are commanded not to worry because our Father cares for us. That First Peter 5, 7, and we looked at Jesus' teaching, parts of select portions of Jesus' teaching, where he emphasized our value and that we, we, we are of worth and that we matter to God. And because we matter to God, purchased by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, we are not our own. In fact, we are not our own. We belong to God. Then he's pledged and promised to take care of us. So let's proceed a step further uh, in this episode, still looking at the care uh, the, that we have a caring father. We'll conclude this point, this third, second point today. So the next thing I want us to see, we find in that verse. Look at Philippians 4, verse, verse, verse 6. He says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. There's a certain number of words here that border on prayer. Notice prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, and requests. All those words. And we're going to piece this down uh, as much as we can in this, epi in this, in this part. So what, what does this show us? It brings us to the third thought, the thought we'll explore today, and which is this, utilize the full range of prayer utilize the full range of prayer. Because you have a caring father, instead of worrying, talk to God. Because you have a caring father, you're commanded not to worry because he cares for you. And because you have a caring father, utilize the full range of prayer. In other words, use the things he has made available, placed in your hands to be free from worry. Look at that same Philippians 4, 6 from the Kenneth Woods. We read it last time. Let me read it again. Stop worrying about even one thing, but in everything by prayer, whose essence is that of worship and devotion, and by supplication, which is a cry for your personal needs, with thanksgiving, let your requests for the things asked be made known, to, be made known in the presence of God. So like I said, God, Paul uses different words that relate to our requests and how we should make them known unto God. He says again, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known unto God. In other words, you, how do you make your requests known unto God? Your requests are those things, like I said, that would otherwise have constituted worry, that would have made for worry. <clears throat> so what do we do with these requests? We make them known unto God through the means of prayer and supplication accompanied with thanksgiving. That word request is the Greek word aitema, aitema, which refers to, is from the word aito, okay, which refers to, 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 to a thing asked for, asked or sought for. It refers to a petition or a request. It is also translated requests or petitions in 1 John 5, 15, this is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, we know he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we have the requests, English Standard Version, the petitions, New King James Version, that we have uh, asked of him. We have them, the petitions or requests. That's that word, aitema. And so again, it refers to something you're seeking for, you know, what you want to happen in your life instead of being worried, what is that thing that would sort, take care of that worry? I, I'm in need of money for this. Uh, I'm, I'm in need for my rent, money for my rent. I need when my children are being sent out of school. You know, that is what is causing me to be worried. That's what's causing me to be, bothered, to be, to be, to be weighed down. Okay, Jesus says, all right, Paul says, make that as a request unto God. That's what you're asking God to do. Now, why did Paul use these different words? There are different words, like I said, that Paul uses. 
in Philippians 4-6, uh, prayer, supplication in particular, and of course, with thanksgiving, to show, uh, for us to make our requests to God. Why did he do this? Well, I believe the re reason is, is simple, that there are different, these are different words, words used to show us that there are different kinds of prayer. When Paul is speaking here, he's speaking about our lives. So that means there will be some situations where we make our requests known unto God with prayer. There are some situations where we make our requests known unto God with supplication. Then there are some situations that it will actually be a combination of both prayer and supplication with that full range of potentials, of tools, if you will, that God has placed in our hands. We can make our requests known to, to him and then we can expect God to intervene in our situations. Paul uses those same two words in Ephesians 6.18. It says, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. There you have them again. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication. There it is again for all saints. So you have prayer and supplication. Of course, you would refer to supplication loosely all right, as, as, as a form of prayer, because it actually is a form of prayer. But that first word for prayer uh, uh, is the general word often used to refer to prayer. So that's a, that's a form of prayer, that word translated as prayer or prayer. And the word supplication, and I'll give you the meanings in a bit, also is another word for prayer. So why do we need all these different types of prayers in making our requests known to God? because different situations will require a different kind of praying. And that's what Ephesians 6, 18 says, pray at all times. You can't pray the same prayer at all times. You don't pray the same prayer at all times. For some Christians, the only prayer they know is the prayer of intercession. <laughs> they don't know about the prayer of faith or prayer of petition, which basically has to do with their needs. So they pray for others the same way they pray for themselves. And really, you can't do that because there are different principles, different rules governing, governing prayer. And sometimes you need both form, different forms of prayer in the same situation or transaction because there are different, some of these problems and situations we face in life are multi-layered. There are different levels to them. So you just can't use one prayer to address. There is no one prayer that is fix it all. The only thing that goes through, every, cuts across every form of prayer is that every form of prayer must be made in faith and every form of prayer must be characterized with thanksgiving. But there are different intricacies involved in these situations. And sometimes in a, in a situation, in a transaction, you start with one prayer, but other things come up and you, 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 you're still on building on the back of the prayer you are, you've offered. You offer and you, you pray another kind of prayer of prayer for the same situation. A good way to illustrate it is a mechanic or who is fixing your tire. You know, for him to fix your tire, he's going to use different tools. Now he's doing one job. He's fixing your tire. He's removing it and he's replacing it. So he he uses a, I think it's called a, a spanner, I think it is, you know, to remove the knobs uh, from your from your tire. You know, uh, he'll use something else to bring the rim of the tire the tire out of the rim, pardon me, to, to separate them. He'll use something else to check the level of the tire. That's a valve gauge or whatever. You see, just one thing he's doing, I've mentioned three, and I'm sure there are, if there are more. This is not my forte. <laughs> but there are more things involved that, that, that the mechanic or the, the, the guy is going to use. One transaction, however, using, making use, utilizing different options, different equipment, is the same thing with, with prayer. Uh, so that's why Paul said, with prayer and in supplication, make your words, requests known unto God. So let's look at that word prayer. That word prayer, that word prayer is uh, the Greek word prosuke, prosuke, and uh, it means different things. It refers basically to prayer, to prayer. It could also uh, refer to a place where prayer is offered and, uh, and uh, it is also referred to as a petition addressed to a deity, to deity. 
Let me show you places where that word is used so you can see how this, involve, how this would be involved in your life. Look at Luke chapter 6, verse 12 to 13. It says, in these days, speaking about Christ, he went out <clears throat> to the mountain to pray and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when the day came, he called his disciples and chose from them 12 whom he named apostles. Notice the use of the word pray and prayer. Same basic word there, uh, uh, prosuke. I believe the other praise, prosuke, uh, uh, yeah, uh, pray, praise, prosukomai, which is from prosuke, and then prayer is prosuke. So it shows us that Jesus prayed all night, continued all night in prayer to God. Let me show you another text which some of us are familiar with. James chapter 5, verse 14 to 18. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer, that's our word again, of faith will, will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven 16, therefore confess your faults to one another and pray, that's our word prosuke, for one another that you may be healed. The prayer, this is a different word, all right, of a righteous man has great power in its working. But that word prayer there, the next word there is desis, which is interestingly is the word supplication, which I'll come to in a moment. That word is used in the sense of prosuke, prosuke here. So sometimes these Greek words, they're different, but they're used interchangeably because you can see that in verse 16. Verse 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed, that's our word, fervently that it might not rain and for, six, and for three months and six months it did not rain on the earth. Verse 18, then he prayed again, that's our word, prayed, and the heaven gave rain and the earth bore its fruit. So Paul is telling us, remember, flashback to Paul, Philippians 4, 6, in all things by prayer and supplication. Prayer, make your request known to God. And we can see from this text some things about that word prayer, prosuke. And what do we see? Well, we see first of all in the life of Jesus that this prayer was, 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 was involved, was crucial, vital in Jesus' choice of disciples. He tells us in verse 12 of Luke 6, that I continued all night in a secluded place in the mountain in prayer to God. And then verse 13 tells us that the next day, when the day had come, he chose his disciples. So what do you think happened? Well, in choosing his disciples, what did he do? Before he chose his disciples, what did he do? He invested time in prayer. So before you make any decision, major decision, small decision, spend time in prayer. And I'm not saying be religious about it. I mean, this is Jesus coming to accomplish his purpose on the earth. The people who worked with him were very important. And so before he went out, before he chose them, he's, you're talking about the 12. Jesus even had a larger group of 70 people and even hundreds of people who were his disciples. But that inner caucus, that sanctum of people that would work closely with him before he made, before he chose them, he spent time. So it's almost as though he compared his notes with God or God got to take upon it. Lord, this is the person I'm considering. And when he, had, when he was done with prayer, uh, with his prayer, on the strength of his prayer, he chose his, chose his disciples. And uh, uh, they were the people who worked with him. We also see here that you, can make, you should make an investment in your life, in a prayer life, in your, in your prayer. Have a prayer life. Prayer is not just something we just crash on God. Lord, I have my problems. God doesn't hear, your, doesn't hear your voice of praise. He doesn't hear your voice of thanksgiving. You don't spend time worshiping him. You don't, you've not integrated prayer into your life. We see here that Jesus spent all night in prayer to God. That tells me something. Number one, this is a pattern. And you see, it's difficult for a person who does not have a lifestyle of prayer to continue all night in prayer to God. It's not likely. If you've not been dependent upon God, that in the little things, in the major things, you run it by God, you ask for his take before you make decisions, or you just have a life of fellowship with God. In fact, this word pray, prayer, prosuke, is one of the most generic words for prayer. And one of the definitions some other translators give is that it refers to worship. In fact, if you remember Kenneth Woos, we read, it says, 
but in everything by prayer, that's prosuke, whose essence is that of worship and devotion. See? So that's a lifestyle. So prayer is not just, the reason why many of our prayers are not heard and answered is because we just great gate crash on God. And most of our prayers are not prayers of faith, they are prayers of desperation. There is no, there is no intimacy. What Jesus said in John 15, 7, if you abide in me, there is no ongoing practice of looking unto God, of drawing from God, of saying, Father, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. You know, you know, like Paul said, pray continually. That, that rich rapport is missing in many of our lives. And so prayer just becomes a hollow shell and a shallow experience. So Jesus spent time in prayer. And then we see that from James chapter 5, prosuke, you pray in faith. That's the, that's the, that's the dominant theme in, this, in these five verses. And that word prayer in James 5, 14 to 18, you know, it's just saturated and populated uh, in that text. And he tells us about how Elijah prayed and he turned situations around by his prayer. So that's what you find about that word, prosukomai. It's a word that shows that you get God involved. And with this prayer, you can change situations and turn them around. Then the next word we have in that verse, Paul says in Philippians 4, prayer and supplication. That word, the Greek word, deisis. Deisis, which means to make, make known one's particular need. To make known one's particular need or want, and so forth. It also refers to an urgent request to meet a need, and it's exclusively addressed to God, translated prayer. Now, let me show you two places where that word is used so that you can also see the potential and the power in this, in this prayer. These are different words, and you see that though they still have the same idea of talking to God, but you can see the nuances involved. In verse 13, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 13, but the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer, that's the word, Dasis, has been heard, and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Philippians 1, 19 is another verse. I love this. It's a favorite verse of mine. For I know that through your prayers, Paul is speaking to the same Philippians, and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. So let's observe some things. The time is almost gone. In the use of deities in these two sample verses I gave to us. Firstly, it is used for a request that is difficult or impossible for man. That's what we see with Zechariah. Zechariah had prayed. Text tells us that he and his wife could not have a child. Now they're in the end years of their life and the angel comes with an answer from God, from the throne of God to tell uh, Zechariah that his prayer has been heard and that Elizabeth will bear him a son. So this is, this is, this is a, an impossible situation. So definitely Zechariah turned to God because this situation, he couldn't fix it by himself. So are there situations that you are faced with that you can't fix by yourself? Listen, the way the world is going, even without how worse the world is going, the downward spiral that's happening everywhere. You know, you know, you know, you know, you, you can't solve it all by, all by yourself. And this is why you must learn to develop intimacy with God, that when you're faced with a situation, your first thought is not the bank, it's a money situation, it's not a bank, it's not who can I borrow from, it's not who can I turn to. Your instinctive response is God. No matter what, you have a diagnosis, the doctor has told you something, or there's a financial situation you're faced with, you can't solve it by yourself. Then you're first, like I gave the example in previous episode where the child said, ah, he has, she hasn't prayed. Has he prayed? Has she prayed? That should be your response. And we see that Zechariah prayed this, uh, operated this way. When we look at the Philippians, Paul tells us, that a supernatural help was available through the Holy Spirit. He says that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus, that's the Holy Spirit. So prayer is powerful. For what reason? Because it enlists the help of God to work the supernatural. 
Prayer is powerful because it enlists the help of God to work this supernatural. Paul was saying that when you pray and the supply that the Spirit of Jesus gives you, which could be the supply in the place of prayer, or it could also mean the supply, his intervention, the help that comes as a result of the prayer. Paul said, I know the situation is going to be turned around. So what situation do you have before you? What sentence that looks negative before you today, that is worrying you, that is weighing you down? We have an example in this verse through the power of this Greek word, deisis, that you can pray unto God. You can talk to God about it. It's beyond the realm of human ability. And understand that there are some things that you speak to. There are situations you command to. There are also situations you talk to God about. And I seem to believe that this word deisis is deep. It's a, it's, a, it's a deep heart cry, you know, from your heart to God. And Paul said that when you pray this prayer, the other thing he says, we see that is that the situation will be turned around. Something which would have been detrimental to Paul, the cause of Christ and the gospel turned around. It's like when, when, when somebody is giving a sentence, maybe their health is bad, they're about to, turn, they're about to die or something, or the, the situation has gone from bad to worse. And all of a sudden, seemingly from nowhere, there was a turnaround and the doctors are surprised. And I believe that's a word for somebody, that God can bring that situation, no matter how far, far gone it is, at the brink of death, death, at the brink of death, at the brink of a foreclosure, God can turn it around. And this happens when you learn to turn your face to the wall and pray to God. And the next thing Paul says, which goes with prayer and supplication, is thanksgiving. And thanksgiving is a sign, an indication that you know that God has heard, and because he has heard, he has answered, and he has intervened. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you because you're a caring father, a father who loves, for, who loves us and is involved in every area of our lives. Thank you for the full range of prayer you've given to us, and we'll maximize it to its benefit, to our benefit and to its fullest. In Jesus' name, amen. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why, when, how, what, who, and the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today? to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new. As you have promised, I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. 
It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at TV, and also on Pastor Nketi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nketi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.